All right, ladies and gentlemen, so it is actually Tuesday morning, almost 6.30 in the morning. So later today, I'm going to be watching the Nintendo Direct with Dean and a few other friends of ours. And, uh, oh wow, the Square Enix press conference was last night. And may I say, it was actually very entertaining. Um... Quick disclaimer before I do, I'm pretty sure I poured dust in my coffee this morning. Or dirt. Or something. Because it tastes uncannily bitter. Despite this, so there were a few main takeaways from, uh, from Square Enix. Uh, which I just talked about over Twitter and on Dean's live stream. If you want to see my whole reaction to it, then you can see Dean's live stream. Uh, because I already did a whole reaction, this video is just going to be like my thoughts and impressions. And this is already kind of going to be uh, toned down a little bit. Like, it's not going to be super long. But this was all my main takeaway. So when they showed Octopath, I literally jumped out of my chair. I screamed because of how much I love Octopath. Wow. <laughs> yeah, PS4, Switch. Oh, Octopath. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. What is what? this, the DLC? This world is full of mysteries. Is this coming what to mobile this? too? What is this? I bet you this is, is coming this? to mobile as well. What is this? Watch, watch. It's, it's coming to mobile the, as well. The mobile, the mobile was a prequel. No, what like the doing? main game. Oh, yeah, it's coming to... It just came to Steam the other day. But why is it no, here? are they just talking about... I'm still trying to look for this trailer. Don't tell me it's just telling us about the Switch port. The Switch port? Or not the, sorry, the PC. The trailer's still not up on YouTube. Okay, what about on it? On Steam, that's it. On, oh my god, Are you kidding no. me? Come on, no. Square. No. That's so stupid. I love that. Why? Dude, you got so Ooh. excited. And I thought they were announcing the sequel or talking about the prequel. But no, they were talking about the Steam port, the PC port. The Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC is still bad. And if you want to know why, go watch my last video. FF7R looks downright amazing. I have yet to see the, uh, the show floor gameplay, because they said that you could play it on the show floor. Uh, but the trailers and everything that they showed was downright amazing. Oh, I didn't even see this. You can see the continue and the new game stuff. So we're going to watch the FF7 stuff. Actually, yeah. We're going to watch the FF7 stuff. And then uh, we'll pretty much be done. The other thing is that FF8 uh, was announced to be remastered. And I'm really looking forward to it. The graphics and everything is a major upgrade to how the game used to look. Like, people used to make fun of this game because of the way it looked. So, it actually, uh, yeah, I could have sworn something's in my coffee, but it actually does look really good. Um, it's coming out for the PlayStation and I think PC, I don't know, but uh, FF8 Remaster, it looks good, definitely getting it. So, in on Dean's live stream, I mentioned I played in Beat 7, I loved it. I, I would give it like a solid, I don't know, maybe 8 or 9 out of 10. Probably, I would probably just make it a 10 out of 10 if I played it like on release. But because like my expectations of some JRPGs and whatnot, be it turn-based or action-based, have just developed over the years. As just technology's gotten better, it's probably why it's not a perfect score. But FF7, for all intents and purposes, is pretty much a perfect game. Uh, and I say this as someone who's not really 100% like in love with Final Fantasy. I, I, I think we'll put it that way. Uh, so I'm hoping that the remake will capitalize on that. And uh, they do mention 
during this conference that that they're aiming to for it to be kind of like more of a uh, more of a um, this is just the previous trailer, right? Oh no, I don't think so. More of like a retelling or a reimagining. So it's not a beat by beat remake, which I which I'm appreciative uh, for. So let's go ahead and play this. He doesn't look scrawny anymore. Okay, so that was the teasing announcement. So they get the people who work on it up on stage. Namora even comes out. Alright, here we go. So, Neil is here to introduce you and walk you through gameplay. This is, okay, so before this happened, as this was going on, when I was talking with Dean, and we were talking about, as far as FF7 is concerned, what exactly do we want to see? I mentioned clarification, because there was still a lot of people confused about how many parts is this thing going to be, how many discs is it going to be on, uh, what, what is the gameplay going to be like, in Acedra. So this is kind of the part here where they talk about that, uh, specifically gameplay. Um, they mention that what they're releasing in March with the deluxe edition and everything else is big enough to fit on two Blu-ray discs. So they're releasing two discs in March, which is supposed to both be part one of FF7. If you played the original FF7 game, then you'll know that the game is split up into... Uh, I can't remember if it was either three or four parts. Three sounds right, because you have the first part, which is big, and then you have the second part, which is bigger, and then you have the third part, which was just the final boss. That sounds right. But, so, uh, with this, uh, the, the, the parts seem to be bigger, but... I don't know. So we have two discs for part one. Um, what they'll probably end up doing, since part three was so short in the original, they'll probably just put the contents of part three into part two. So that may be whenever. So, but anyway. Thank you, Katasi san. All right, everyone. Let's mosey. <laughs> Final Fantasy VII Remake features a hybrid gameplay system that merges real-time action with strategic command-based combat. For starters, each press of the square button is a swing of Cloud's Buster Sword. Cloud attacks, dodges, and blocks all in real time. His standard attacks do some damage, but they barely scratch the surface of Cloud's true potential. Succeeding on the battlefield requires much more than just hacking and slashing. Cloud needs to be tactical. He needs a... T B. Two ATB bars are displayed in the lower right. These fill up slowly over time, but fill much faster as Cloud lands standard attacks. Once an ATB bar is full, you can enter tactical mode, where time slows to a crawl and you have the opportunity to choose actions from the com command menu. Katasi-san, I've had the pleasure of seeing quite a bit of the game, but tactical mode never gets old for me. I can so basically, the game plays mostly in real time, uh, similar to Final Fantasy XV, the Kingdom Hearts series, etc. The game plays mostly in real time. Um, with the ATB bars, those rise as you deal damage. Um, once they get full, whether it be both bars or just one, uh, the, the game basically pauses itself, basically. And you can 
input regular your regular turn based attacks. So it makes it interesting because like it keeps the turn based elements from the first game. It keeps the it keeps that essence of strategy from the first or from from the original. But you you're not sitting there, you know, just spamming the A button, you know, while I mean, okay, I've made this comment before. I forgot what it what video it was on, but it was on a video. Uh, people complain about like Kingdom Hearts, for example, or it, it was about the Persona 5R versus Persona Scramble. People will complain about hack and slashes and say, "Well, they're just button mashers," you know, like the uh, like the the Warriors game, Hyrule Warriors, and etc. The like Dynasty Warriors. That's it. People will complain about hack and slashes. But the deal with hack and slashes is like, yes, all you need to do is mash X. But when it comes to like moving your character and whatnot, you can mash X all you want. You're going to end up in a corner eventually. When it comes to turn-based games, specifically looking at like Pokemon, even Persona to an extent. And I know for a fact Final Fantasy VII because this is how I felt playing Final Fantasy VII. When the game remembers what your last action was, like... You can do it in settings or whatever. You can have the game remember your last your last attack. You can just spam that button. If that attack if that attack works, you can just spam that button. And it takes longer because it's a turn based battle. So you're not. I'm like basically what I'm saying is that turn based battles can be just as mindless as hack and slashes. So this puts the two together. It keeps you on your feet, and I really appreciate that. Um, I like how it's hack and slash first, and then once you hack and slash for a little bit, then you go into tactical mode where you do turn base. So you can do your limits, you can do your magic, you can use items. I think that's really, really good. Dean pointed out that it's a lot similar to 13-2's, I believe it was, to 13-2's gameplay. I never played 13 2, so I can't contest to that. You just sit here but all day long and watch this beautiful slow motion action. I really like this. So he, he insists it's slow motion, but it doesn't look like anything's moving. Because if it's slow motion, then it would mean that eventually, if you just let it sit for long enough, your characters would move to the point to where they would continue hurting each other. I, I don't know how that's going to happen if you want to keep the turn base elements. Maybe. I could be wrong, but. I'm a huge fan of the gameplay. Um, Materia actually shows on the weaponry, which is nice. Of course, this being a remake, we're sure to see some people to target enemies at a distance. Barrett's standard attacks generate ATB charges similar to Cloud, but his abilities are entirely different. Okay, so since Barrett is obviously not a swordsman, he has a gun arm, he's able to hit enemies uh, in context of a real-time battle system uh, from far away. So that makes Barrett a lot useful when it comes to these types of attacks. I'm really interested with this concept, because with the, this concept shows you that each character plays differently. Even later when they announce Tifa, spoiler alert, even later when they show Tifa, she plays significantly different than Cloud. Mm, excuse me. Whew. So, I'm interested to see how different exactly the up-close battlers of your party are concerned. Because, what, Sid uses a lance. Yuffie uses the uh, chakra, or whatever, the, the, the ninja stars. Red uses bites. Um, Kate Sith, what does Kate Sith use? He uses the dice, right? Vincent, I forgot what Vincent uses. I want to say he uses a gun, but I know he can actually transform. Vincent FF7 weapon. Oh, does he use swords? Oh, no. Oh, he uses guns. And then, uh, and then his limit is that he can transform into an, into a monster, so or a vampire or whatever. Am I missing anyone? Excuse me. I don't think I am. But in context, that's that's gonna be really cool. Like having Vincent transform. I wonder how summon materia is also gonna work. Like, is it going to work similar to Kingdom Hearts? Like, maybe you'll have a little cinematic thing, and then, like, the the 
commands and the buttons will change? Is that basically what it is? Or will the summon be doing their own thing on the field as you continuously are attacking? I don't know. But that's cool. So FF7 looks to be downright amazing. It releases in March with different editions, actually. You can just get the game, you can get the deluxe edition. Nomura out here dressing weird. You can get the deluxe edition, you can get the first class edition, I believe is what it was called. It's like, uh, it basically has a Play Arts figure and another thing. But, as far as I'm concerned, the uh, FF7R Deluxe Edition. This is probably going to be the eighty, uh, the eighty dollar packet, similar to uh, Kingdom Hearts. Okay, so the first class edition comes with uh, obviously the game, a steelbook case, the play arts figures, the art book, a CD music collection. Uh, plus, there's the pre-order pack. There's a little pre-order bonus, and then you have Summon Materia DLC, which it looks to be a character. Oh, so these are like new. New summons. That's nice. Alright, so, yeah. So aside from the standard edition of the game, which is $60, Square Enix will be offering the Deluxe Edition of FF7, which will retail for $80. The Deluxe Edition will offer a hardcover art book with concept art from the game, a mini soundtrack CD, a Cactuar Summon Materia DLC, and a special steelbook case. Square Enix also revealed a second special edition called the First Class Edition, which also includes all of the content of the Deluxe, alongside a Play Arts Kai made Cloud Strife statue, his bike and buster sword. It is $330 and is, is, and is exclusive to the Square Enix store, but appears to be the ultimate edition. Uh, Square fans also, or Square also notes that all the pre-order will also, or, oh, that those who pre-order the remake across any version will receive a special Chocobo Chick Summon Material DLC with the game's launch. So that looks to be it. So I am going to be getting the Deluxe Edition for the art book, the Steel soundtrack, and then I would be getting two uh, Summon Materia. So that looks amazing. Uh, let's skim through here. I hate Dragon Quest. Now, I, I don't hate it because of the games. I hate it because of the art style. I am not a fan of the Dragon Ball art style. I'm, I'm just not. It's It looks bad to me. So we're getting D. I am gonna get DQ11 though, because I was told that DQ11 is a fantastic JRPG, and so I'm gonna give DQ11 a try. So they showcase the Remind trailer, which looks like poop again, and I've talked about that. Um, what is this? Is this FF8? Oh no, that's Shadowbringers. That's still Shadowbringers. Oh, is this FF8? Yeah, so here's FF8. See, this game, graphic-wise, is in a weird position between FF7's polygon models and FF9's more cleaner models. To me, I feel like it's noticeable, and it kind of gives the impression that... Not that, like, it's bad or anything, but just, like, it's awkward. I feel like it looks awkward, but I've never played FF8 before, and I'm looking forward to playing as this. Oh yeah, that's right, the Avengers game. I don't like it. <laughs> I think it's bland. I think it's boring. I think it's just another Marvel video game that I'm not going to be caring about. I'm barely forcing myself to, to remember that Ultimate Alliance exists. But... This has online multiplayer, and they will continuously add free superheroes. Hawkeye, DLC Day 1. Not really, but... So, that's kind of good news. The bad news is that it's going to be update. Like, it's, it almost seems like it's going to be updated in, in the sense of games like Call of Duty, Fortnite, Overwatch, etc. Like, they're updating it for the players, 
if that may if that makes sense like it's not necessarily a bad thing but like in context of making good games you want to make good games that last a while spider-man ps4 is a great example of this it's a great game that that is lasting a while not just because of its updates and its dlc but just the fact that the game itself is a fantastic game there was nothing here that pronged me to want to buy this game the gameplay looks okay I like how the gameplay changes between characters, and it's just not Iron Man VR, but I don't know. I'm in a weird position of wanting to care, really, really wanting to care, but I just find myself not caring. So, was was this on the game show? Does anyone know if this was on the game floor, if people could play this, like, demo? Because if people could do that, then I want to go and look at gameplay, and I'll make a verdict on that. But despite this, that was pretty much it. FF7, like like I said here, I pressed on the I pressed on the hashtag. Go back. I was robbed of Octopath hype. Kingdom Hearts DLC is still bad. FF7R looks amazing, and FF8 looks super cool. So that's about it. In a little while, guys, we have Nintendo. So here we go.